point as far as um, designs. I have a lot of people that do faces with letters and things like that. Uh, I want you to make an, a, a shape or a face or a dog or a cat or whatever just using letters. What? No, no, no. This isn't words here. Look at that. I had some really good ones from last semester that I don't have right now. I wish I did. If we could go back in time. Uh, oh, I do have some from, or at least the one from the first class. I had a little PowerPoint presentation with some samples in there. I think there were some samples in that, weren't there? Um, where were the, here it is. This PowerPoint had a sample in there, didn't it? Oh, and we looked at some online, though, didn't we, too? We did. Here, I thought this one was nice. There. So again, you can use letters, again, but all this in here, and I can't blow this up. Maybe I can make it bigger. No, I can't make it bigger. How do I make it bigger? PowerPoint. There we go. Oh, there we go. I'm going to make it a little bigger. So these are all the flowers? Yeah, these are, this is all letters. Yes. Yeah, that's all letters in the cat. Okay. Today we're going to learn how to put letters on a, on a cat. Okay, so letters that follow. So this could be a shape, a line, and then you put the letters on the line. Okay, so we'll do that today. So we'll cover. So shapes on a path, and then of course, a lot of students uh, will do a poem and, and draw a shape that relates to the poem. That's always a good one. A poem is good. Um, maybe some statements or something so anything like that so this was a nice one I thought I had an elephant one didn't I have an elephant one an elephant one I did it one time okay let's briefly talk about the artist statement so we can discuss that so in this case for the past 15 years probably we've been doing a what we call an artist statement in Illustrator here and your kind of project and we'll, we're gonna do um, actually next week we're gonna do the mission seal and then we'll start this so actually we kind of these are a little out of order here we're gonna do this mission seal um, where we, we, we make a patch for a, a, a um, um, NASA every time they send a spaceship into the space they make a special seal that goes on usually on the uniform of the astronaut, right? And so um, I was visiting Cape Canaveral and I was walking down the hall and they had a hallway for, full of all the mission seals that were there and they were all looked like they were all done in Illustrator. And I'm like, you know? And so for the past couple of years, I've been including that as an assignment because we learned, again, a little more drawing techniques, uh, how to do things within a circle uh, how to have text that goes around something today, you know, like this, how the text goes around. And so that's what I'll demonstrate next week. A little bit different than on the path. Let's wait till next week to do that. Um, today I'll show you how to do it on a path. But this is what we'll do next week. And then after that, we'll go right into doing something called the artist statement. Again, the artist statement is you choose one artist and you write about that artist and you take their their name and of course put their name on there usually we go over how to include a portrait but that is not a requirement I know both of these have you know this is the artist here and this is the artist here but you don't have to put a portrait of the person in the statement it was just I do a demonstration of how to use something called an image trace the image trace is how you take it a, a bitmap image and convert it into vector and that's just part of my demonstration, but you don't have to, you don't have to, don't have to include, have to include that. See here, you can see the letters are wrapping around the edge of the artist here. So we do a lot of word wrapping. We do columns of text. Last class, I think I demonstrated columns of text. If you draw with the text tool into a box, you can then duplicate that box so the text will wrap from one column to the next column. Um, you want to draw something of your own in the style of the artist. So part of this is you have to draw something. Say, hey, this is Illustrator, we want to draw something. So, you know, the student drew this, okay? Or drill. You don't want to turn it into Illustrator. I'd love to have that song in my head. 
And then this student drew this in the style of this artist. Um, you know, they didn't really include any of this artist's work, which I'd love to see at least maybe an image, because then you include images of the artist as well, you know, integrated into the design. Where this student actually drew this as well as that. Mm -hmm. Didn't really show a piece of, from the artist. Or something. So we learned how to download pictures off the internet and wrap texture around a, a, an image as well as drawing your own. Okay, so that's basically it. There's more requirements and there's a handout that explains all the things that you need to put in. But what you should start thinking about now, and we'll have this due again after spring break, so you have some time um, to think about, you know, integrating a background. As you can see, there's a kind of a shape in the background here. Uh, nice titles, which is great. Again, this is, has a nice background here, if you've noticed. And this has a nice background too. And then you have to print it out. We'll talk about where to get printed. My color printer hasn't come yet. Usually I like to show how to use a color printer, and we used to have a color printer. Um, we have one in five, six years. Or the stock with the sign. And you have to work bigger than eight and a half by 11. You use 11 by 14, or 11 by 17 is what's called tabloid. And so, you know, this is bigger. That's where most of the students go. You get a print like that for three dollars. Oh, really? Yeah, three bucks. Yeah, three bucks. And you have to, you have to get a little board. I show you how to cut the board out. I show you how to glue it down. We have a demonstration of that. Okay, so it's fun. And then we do a little critique. And uh, how about we bring in an, I guess, uh, critique. We haven't decided yet. I, I doubt it. Probably two weeks after spring break. Because I want you to spend some time. And I want you to send me your thing so I can give you feedback before you print it. So this is an assignment where I want you to send me a sample, and I'd like to look at it and give you some direction. Maybe okay. it's good to have other people look at it. Maybe get your brother, sister, and aunt Rachel to look at it. Especially when you get to a portrait. You want to have your aunt and uncle look at your portrait before you print that too, right? Okay, so does that help get ready for that? Okay, let's get into um, my demonstration today again is going to be kind of like you saw. We're going to work with different letter forms to make a shape. In Illustrator, we'll talk about gradients over multiple letters as well as how to put letters on a path because that's a common way to make a shape, right? So let's start with... I knew it's already recording. So we're going to make, uh, since it's almost St. Patty's Day, we're going to make a shamrock. Okay? Shamrock. Out of letters, though. Okay? Out of letters. Shamrock out of letters. Okay, so first we should find out what a shamrock looks like. So let's go and steal one from the internet. If I get shamrock, is that what it's called? Sham, S H A M, shamrock? Shamrock? R O C K? Is that shamrock? Shamrock? Isn't that those the, the green things? Yeah, there we go. Shamrock. There we go. That's what I want to do. Oh, that's shamrock material. Ah, ah, I didn't want that. Whoosh, what a horrible website. There you go. I would email, if you're in the web design class, I would email these people and tell them they need a new website and make it for them. Okay, there you go, right there, perfect. See, Golden Gate, they're close too, look. Golden Gate to Cloverdale, Whew. I make you a new website, $2,000. Or at least get a free, uh, free concrete, I guess, or whatever they were selling. Always do things, you can always, uh, uh, um, you know, if you're making things for people, you know, barter system always works well. Make a website for a restaurant, get free food. Yeah, why not? Hey, for them, you know, they, they, hey, that's probably leftover food that we're going to throw away anyway. No. <laughs> okay, so, oh, here we go. Here's a shamrock. Uh, I'm going to copy that. And then, and then, uh, you can drag it if you want, either way. There we go. I just needed the shape. 
Okay, so uh, in this case, uh, I'm just going to do the quick and cheesy, easy way to get the text to go around the outside is I'm going to make a path, and I'm going to have the text follow that path. So I'm going to have the word shamrock kind of following the outline of the shape. So again, so here's how I would do it. I would, I'm going to make this a little bigger because I like to have big space when I'm doing this. So I'm going to make it a little bigger. And I'm going to use my favorite tool. Everybody's favorite tool is what? The pen tool right there. You don't need no fill. I might do a little stroke, give it a little color so I can see what I'm doing. And here we go. I'm going to go and go all the way around the outside of my shamrock here with just a line, just a line. Don't worry, I can fix this later. In fact, I'm not going to go there. I'm going to go around here, and we'll add the stem as a, as a separate letter form. The stem will be a separate letter form. There we go. So I went all the way around and of course you can use your white selection tool here to clear it up, fix it a little bit. You don't have to have it perfect. Exaggerate it maybe a little bit. It doesn't need to be perfect. There we go. Okay. Okay, so it's okay if it's a little, not exactly, but I'm just looking for the shape. So in this case, I'm going to do a couple different things. One of them is I'm going to have the letters going all the way around the outside of this uh, or inside, wherever, of this shape, as well as I'm going to do another object where I actually have the letters inside the object, and I'm going to do something called a, uh, a mask, a mask. So let me draw this on the board for you so you can see the two things that we're going to demo right now and why we need to do certain things. So we have our shamrock shape. It looks like keep this shape because it's going to go it's going to go invisible so here we go so to duplicate that shape i'm going to use my black arrow right here and i'm just going to zoom out briefly here so i can see some space i'm going to click on my path and i'm going to control click and or control click and drag to keep my shape i want to keep that because i'm going to use this for other things is what i'm trying to say okay so then I'm going to go and put the text along a path. How I do that is I can select my path. I can go to my text tool right here. And inside my text tool, I'm going to use the text on a path. Text on a path. And I'm going to go. Now, where you click is very important because that's where the text is going to start. So I'm going to kind of start it up here at the top. And I'm going to click with my mouse. And my text shows up. And you'll see the eye bar. And let's zoom in a little bit. The I bar for the for the text is actually 
flashing right here. You can see it there. And if I type in the word sham, sham, S-H-A-M, rock, sham rock, and I'm going to hit space. And now I want to duplicate that all the way around so it goes all the way around my object. And I think uh, to duplicate was uh, um, we can copy and paste. So I'm going to highlight this all. I'm going to highlight this all. I'm going to copy Command C. I'm going to click again in the same area. And I'm going to paste Command V. And then I can either paste a bunch or duplicate um, just by hitting Command V. Notice how it keeps going around. And let me zoom out a little bit. Okay, I'm hitting Command V. And it's going around. Command V, copy and paste. It's going around. It's coming around. It's almost to the end. Oh, there's a little gap there at the end. And we can use that. We can adjust it. And we can change the size and stuff. But first, get the letters going all the way around. How I did that again was using the text on a path. And then... Um, And so on. Uh oh, how did I get one over there? Did I get text on a path over there? Look. I don't know how I could do that one. Delete that one. I don't know how that happened. I think I duplicated it accidentally. Okay, so did you see how I did that? Text on a path. Notice the path, it was invisible. Remember, it was a stroke and it had a black line, but now it's gone. So keep that in mind if you want to keep the shape duplicated. When we get to, to doing the mission seal, it's going to be the same thing. I'm going to have it's really hard to get the circle to be just perfect around the circle there. So there's going to be some tricks to doing that. Of course, duplicating the shape is probably the best way. What? How do I do what part? I used the text tool on the path. Yes, I clicked on the path. And I typed the word, and then I highlighted the word, and I copied it, and then I pasted it all the way around. And it just kept going all the way around. <clears throat> Did you get it to work? Yes? OK. Now, if you click at the beginning where you first click, so I'm going to zoom in real close. I'm zooming in, I'm zooming in. I'm looking kind of close here. You'll notice I have, if you click at the very beginning, you'll have two lines, two lines. These two lines indicate where it's going to start. Okay, so right now, if I click on this, oh, I don't want to do that. If I click on this line right here, and I can drag it, and you'll see where you can actually move the text around. And if you get a little thing like that, it's messed up. So don't do that. Uh, let's try this one. No, that's going to mess it up too. Don't move it around. How about that? We'll get to that when we we'll get to those two bars when we do the um, when we, when we do the uh, um, mission seal. It's not going to work very good right there. But there is a way to move it on there somehow like that. It's just it's too. There's not enough text there. Um, Let's do the other one I wanted to do, where I'm going to have the word shamrock going across, like this, all the way across, all the way across. So I'm going to do that with big text. So I'm going to click on the, the screen. I'm going to type in sham rock like that. And I'm going to make it kind of big. Use a big font. Let's choose a font. Nice uh, Celtic font. Do I, do I download a Celtic font? Wouldn't that be kind of cool if I, if I had some Celtic fonts here? I guess I don't have any good Celtic fonts, do I? And I'm going to make it a little bigger. Is that it? Shamrock? And oh, oh, yeah, we can expand it a little bit. And so next, I'm going to kind of drag it across by duplicating option, click, and drag. Then I'm going to select both of them, option, click, and drag down. Option, click, and drag down. So I'm just duplicating. This is probably one of the best ways. Duplicating. Duplicating, 
duplicating, duplicating, duplicating, duplicating, duplicating, duplicating. I'm just option clicking, dragging this. And then, of course, you need to, uh, there's some space over here, so I'm probably going to have to duplicate all these letters over here. All these here. Oops, not that one. Didn't I select them all? Let me try again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's see. Option, click, and drag. Oh, I missed a couple. I'm just clicking and dragging with the, the option key. And then this one, nope, this one. And then, oh, I need a couple over here as well, don't I? Here we go. that one okay there we go so I duplicated the word shamrock all the way around there and what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to apply a gradient to them and then I'm gonna use that shape my original shape to to mask out the things outside so the words are only in the shape of the shamrock okay so the key here to, of course, doing the gradient is to um, – actually, I'm going to have some problems selecting things. So organization might be best when you're trying to do something like this. And so in order to not mess with the original bitmap image as well as the text that goes around the outside, I'm going to lock both those layers so that as I'm trying to work with this, I'm not interfered with the artwork that's underneath it. Does that make sense? If you remember dropping, locking things, you can go under Windows, Layers, Window, Layers, and in the Layers window, you'll have all your objects. You'll see we've got a lot of text. If you go all the way to the bottom of my Layers window, you'll notice I have the text for the shamrock that goes around. You can see it there. I'm going to lock that by hitting next to the eyeball there is a lock feature next to the eyeball that allows you to lock that as well as the bitmap image the graphic that I have back there in fact we could probably get rid of that we don't even need that anymore do we We can actually just probably trash that we don't need that anymore but the most important thing is I don't want to mess with this so I'm gonna lock it so that I can work with other things Okay, so next, since that's locked, I can then easily select all the text by drawing a box around it by holding my left mouse down and drawing a box around to select all my text. And, of course, the shamrock. So, again, by locking this, I can easily select everything without having to select that at the same time because it's locked. Okay, now we want to apply gradient over the whole thing. We'll do some nice green gradient or something. The easiest way to apply a gradient over a group of texts is to use, of course, the appearance window. Remember last class when we were using the appearance window to apply gradients to text? I can't, again, you can't just come over here and hit the gradient and expect it to show up. It's not going to work. Gradients won't go in text unless you do something. You either convert the text to an object and you can do that, that's one way of doing it. If you convert the text, and if you remember from last class, we converted text to an object by using type, create outlines. That's one way of getting a gradient. The problem with that, though, let's see what the problem with this is. If I go under type, create outlines, and convert the text to an object like this, and it makes it, they're all object now, and if I go and hit my gradient option, and they're all, they all have a gradient now, but let's see what it looks like. Ah. Each individual letter has a gradient. 
Okay. What if I wanted the gradient to go across all the letters at the same time? One gradient that covers all the letters. So let's not do that. I'm going to undo this. I'm going to undo this. Undo create outlines. I'm going to keep them as text. Keep them as text. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go apply a new fill over top of them using the appearance window. Again, it's under window, appearance. In the appearance window, I can add a new fill, which is this one right here, add new fill. Puts a new fill on top. Now, of course, I put black on there, but we don't want black. We're going to put ourselves a nice gradient. Let's start with the, the, oh, look at that, though. Now it's doing only the letters as a team and not individual letters. Do you notice that? Uh, but we can still adjust that even further by using the gradient tool right here, the gradient tool, and I can drag over top of all of them like this, and it'll do all of them as a team. So by using the gradient tool, after you apply the gradient fill, you can drag across all of them. Now, of course, you probably don't want red to yellow. This is a shamrock, so I can go into my gradient options, and I can adjust it. Here we go. Oh, I got a red to whatever this is. How about we get rid of some of these? Again, to drag straight down to get rid of them. Uh, you can click your color to give yourself, ooh, there's your shamrock color. And then this one, let's give it deep. There we go. And then maybe if you want, you can put some extra colors inside there if you want. Maybe put a little light green there. Maybe I'll put a little dark green there. There we go. And again, if I'm using the, the gradient tool here, I can drag across all of them and get myself a nice gradient over all of them like that. So again, to get the gradient, so it goes over a group of text. This is still text. I can type a new word in too. This is not an object. Okay, this is this is text. Again, I use the fill window to fill in wherever the fill. Uh, here it is under appearance. Remember, I added a fill. I select them all, add a fill. After I'm done adding the fill, I then apply the gradient to them. And then I adjusted the gradient using the gradient tool so it went over all of the letters. And then, of course, the last step here to make this even better, if that's a word better, I guess it is a word better, is better as a word, uh, to make it even more cool, I'm going to take the original object that I have. I'm going to give it a fill. You can give it black. It doesn't matter. I'm going to duplicate that again over top of where the shape is here. There we go. I'm going to duplicate that. And then um, I'm going to drag it to the top. I want it to be on top. So again, I took the original shape and I dragged it on top. I'm going to drag it all the way to the very top. You can drag it in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the layers window. Or if you want to bring it all the way to the top, we go underneath object arrange bring to front that'll bring it all the way to the very very front there it is again now to mask out all the stuff that's on the outside there all the stuff that's outside of the shape so to do the mask is a little bit different I believe than it is inside of Photoshop in Photoshop we kind of um, no we do we do an object but it kind of this you take the solid shape is where the stuff is going to show and everything outside the shape is going to be invisible okay so this masking way that we do it here inside of Illustrator is you make the shape the shape needs to be on top you can select all the objects together now we can select all the objects together and then I can do the masking how I do the masking is by going under object clipping mask make what that'll do is wherever the shape is the, this text will show where the shape is not the text will not show if I hit make and you'll see I get all my text now inside of where the shape is and that's how you can make text go within a shape one way of doing it oh of course I didn't do the stem yet but I'm gonna do something different demonstration in a minute anyways um, 
I will pause for a minute. So in this case, if you want to, you know, you want to make a, a smiley face, um, if you click on your letter form, and let's make a really big letter here. Of course, what, how big is one inch text? 72 point is one inch. You know that. And of course, we can do the um, for um, eyebrows. Round brackets always a good one. Or you can even do eyes like that if you want. And you can scale it big, right? This could be an eye. I can rotate it a little bit. There we go. So the two round brackets, there you go, could be an eye. And then I could put a dot inside there for a pupil. That could be an O. Or it could be the dot itself, which is a period, right? A period. And scale that really big. There we go. There, it's a period. There it is. And maybe up oh, there's an it's starting to look like a little eyeball there and then uh, of course we could put in a um, maybe uh, um, something else maybe another period oh with uh, make that white oops select it first get white and we scale that real big oh that's too big I wanted to put it inside the other one here maybe we make it a little slant there we go it's a snake eye. There we go, snake eyes. Don't snakes have little skinny pupils like that? Snake eye. Okay, so think of think of how you can make maybe a face with your letter forms. It's always fun to do. Um, what would make a nice a nice nose maybe would be a seven. Okay, you get a little seven action there. Maybe scale it really big, rotate it all the way around. Woo! There we go. There we go. We got a nose right there. Look at that. Oops. There we go. There we go. How about that for a nose? What do you use for the, the white? I, it's just a, a period that's white, and I made it big and skinny. A period. Uh, you can change the font. You don't always have to use the same font. There we go. Oh, here's a here's a rough nose there. That's using copper. What is it? It was using some font that was crazy font. I was using uh, some crazy font there. Uh, we can duplicate this if you want. Here we go. Here. Hey, look at that fun. How about some eyebrows? What other, what, what other letters can we have? What do we have on the key? Look at your keyboard. What's down there? Oh, oh, maybe we do the, the little carrot thing like that. What is it? The, a chevron, right? That's a chevron. We can make that really big. Chevron. Uh, let's change the font here. Let's get in our character here. Let's change the font. We don't want crop duster. How about, ooh, look at that. Uh, and then maybe we could scale it. Look at that. Scale it. Oops, scale it and rotate that. There we go. And then that could be an eyebrow. There we go. Another eyebrow. Oh, look at that. That's kind of fun. So all you have to do is look at your keyboard. There's all kinds of cool little shapes there. Think of how you can scale them, rotate them. You can color them different colors like that, like we did here, right? We can color things like that. Uh, a mouth you could do as a path. Remember we did the path here, so I could do letters along a path for something like that. How about something like that? Again, the letters along a path, you just make a shape, a path of some kind, and then you can use your letters. And again, we're using the one called type on a path. And we can then just, uh, uh, what, what could we use for letter or for a mouth? We could use um, asterisk. There we go. How about asterisk? There we go. And then you can manipulate that even after you're done making it. You can change your path. How about that? Look at that. So the letters will follow the path that you made. Just like the shamrock. I can change then just the shape of the shamrock and the letters will follow. Just like here. See that? There we go. There, how about that for a mouth? Think of an elephant. I don't know. There, there was a good elephant example I had at one point. I think I had an elephant at one time I showed you. I don't remember uh, where that one went. Um, so, again, think of the letter forms. It should be fun. You know, look at your keyboard. And then, of course, there's all kinds of other letters that you don't even see on your keyboard. Where would they be stored? The letters that you don't see on the keyboard? Okay. There's a secret area inside of Illustrator that has secret characters that you don't see. 
that secret characters are called glyphs. Glyphs. What a term. Glyph. Okay, so let's get to the secret characters. So again, all the letters, all the type has secret characters. They're located under, and you can bring the glyph window up. So if I go under window and go down here, you'll see it's called, it's under type, glyphs, type glyphs. So again, to get to secret characters or secret letters, and they're not secret, they're ones like, right? Like, in, you, you don't go to Canada College up in San Mateo, right? It's Kenyatta College. What makes it Kenyatta? It has an Enya under the N, right? So this is where you would find an Enya. Again, it's called glyphs. Here they are. Here's the secret characters. There, there's a whole bunch of them in there. You can use these in your project. Think of all of them. They're letter forms. You got omega things. You got all these other. Look at them all. There's whole, then it depends on the font you, you choose, too. All these will change. Right now I have, I can't remember what font I have. Oh, this is entire font. Oh. What's that? Yeah, there you go. So you can drag it out. Uh, I think you have to click on the letter first. Oh, I made a mistake. Hold on. To use it, um, again, you can... How did you get to the glyphs? Is glyphs is under window, no. type, glyphs. Okay, thank you. And then if you just double click, it should put it out there. So put the click on the screen for your text tool. And then you can click over here to get your glyphs. I think I'm stuck in some... Oh, I'm in the brush script, that's why. You can choose different scripts, it'll give you different glyphs. Charlemagne, look, it gives you different glyphs. Here's the O with the little carrot roof on top. A lot of Eastern European countries have the little, little carrot on top of their O. Okay, so I'm going to start talking today and let you play for the next hour or so or whatever you want to do. Um, but you remember, you're supposed to finish your fruit, and then we, you go into making letter forms. And then next week, if you want to do some research for next week, look into mission seals on the NASA website, right? You can go to the NASA website and type in mission um, patch. That's the word you would look. They call them patches because they go on, the, they go on the, the uniform. So you want to look up mission patch, okay? And there's a whole bunch of them. you got to Google and see them. NASA mission patch, you'll get a whole bunch of them. Okay, so think about those things that I talked about. I will.